Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Now today on this little video, we're going to be treating my pond with some FMG mixture from NT Labs because we've got some Trichodina, some Costia in there. They're scratching a little bit and, um, and we're going to sort them out. And one of the other, one of my um, Platinum Ogans has got a little bit of fungus on a little ulcer that it's got on its tail. Now I don't really want to stress it out by taking it out and bowling him up and treating him separately. If it gets any worse I will do but at the moment he doesn't seem too too bad it's just a slight little bit of fungus I can see and this stuff will treat um, fungus as well as you can see on the bottle there anti-parasite and fungus treatment so we're going to try that out today I've not used this before I've used other NT lab stuff if you're familiar with the channel you know I use all their um, the Montmorillonite clay powder in here and everything which clarifies the water and does all kinds of good stuff for your pond if you're unfamiliar with that stuff, go and check it out. You can just see the ogan there coming into, into the picture. And, it, and that little lesion is just down by the base of its tail. Um, so we're going to try and sort that out. I don't like bowling up fish if I can help it because obviously it stresses them out even more so. And there's a couple on there with little bits that this treatment could cure. So I'd, I'd rather do that first. Give the treatment put the treatment in the pond kill all the nasties all the little creatures and critters we've had the winter now and sit in so obviously now the weather's warming up temperatures rising your um, that's also going to bring on your parasites as well they're going to start breeding as well and with their immune systems being low they're more susceptible to um, to an infestation of these little costier and trichodina and and things of those nature little parasites of that nature which bore under the slime coat and irritate the life out of these poor guys. You see them flashing around, hitting the sides of the pond, hitting the bottom drain, trying to get, trying to scratch something. And um, the best way to do it, I know it's Trichodina and Costia because I've scraped them. I've got a microscope and I've taken a scrape and I've looked under the microscope and I can see them on there. So one good thing, guys, is always get your fish scraped or if your local fish store has got that facility where they've got most of them will have a microscope if they're a good shop or a good store and you can take in a slide pretty quickish and they'll look at it under the microscope and tell you what you're dealing with that's the best way to do it or if you've got a pond like I've got things on eBay that you can buy now you can buy cheap and cheerful you don't need a massive thousands of pounds worth of tele uh, telescope sorry microscope to um, to check out what it is you want about 400 times something like that and you'll uh, and, and you'll be able to pick these things up so um, this is the stuff we're going to be using. Like I said, I've not used it before, but it's been recommended to me because it does a wide range of parasites in one go. Does white spot trichodina as well, costia, and um, yeah, it's supposed to be good stuff. Another thing, guys, when you're doing your pond, when you're treating, before you treat with any medication whatsoever. Make sure that you test your, your your pond quality, your water quality first, because that could be an issue anyway. It could be something that's out of whack with your parameters. It may be ammonia, which is stressing the fish and causing problems. So always check that all your pond water parameters are fine before you do a treatment, because otherwise you could make things a lot worse. Okay, so make sure that's a that's number one. Get a good little test lab. Lots of companies do them. NT Labs do them. I've got a nice one from JBL which they gave to me which I use which covers a lot of the uh, tests that I can do and so that's really that's, that's paramount you check your water qualities first. With these treatments as well guys if you've got any off or sterlet sturgeon anything of those nature you're gonna have to take them out because this stuff is recommended that you don't use with these types of fish okay. Yeah, anything along those natures, off, rud, tench, sterlets, like I said, sturgeon, anything like that. They're susceptible to these, these copper and these medications. So don't, um, you must take those out first before you, before you carry on with the treatment. Now this stuff is 10 mil per 80 gallons. So we've, so I'm going to go and work out how much I need to, uh, to use in my, in my pond. Obviously your pond is going to be completely different to mine. I've got a big Nexus filter outside 
which takes a large volume of water as well as the pond so I've got to take all these consider all these into consideration when I'm uh, when I'm bringing up this medication so um, to the right to the right dosage that I need for the fish so that's what I'm going to go and do I'm going to get out how much I need how many mil I'm going to need and then I'll get back to you okay right guys there's a better view for you you can see the outside of the pond now as well as the inside I've not done that shot before anyway if you're new to this uh, if you're new to my channel and you've just uh, this is your first little view of um, of my channel hit that little subscribe button and the old notification bell for up and coming videos guys because I do lots of different stuff on here all about this pond slideshow how I built the pond and also all the other the aquarium stuff that I do shrimps fish you name it and we've got it lurking around here somewhere so um, yeah it'd be great to have you aboard so uh, sub up if you like what you see right getting back to business I've just managed to sort out my long mic lead right then guys I've worked out how much I need now for God's sake don't get this stuff on your clothes because it will stain them and you will never get it out in a million years it's um <laughs> it really does stain your, your clothes that's why I'm very careful with it you can add this to a bucket of water and and swirl it around or into a watering can and you can disperse it equally and all over the top of the water like that if you can do it that way if you haven't got that but what I tend to do is I'll go out with this and I'll put this into my Nexus filter on the return pipe which will then suck it down through and it'll all come out through the waterfall killing anything that's lurking in the pipes in there and that way and through the pump as well and then it disperses it then nice and equally all over the place so that's what I'm going to go and do so I can grab the tripod now and I can take you with me out into the garden we go and we can look inside the Nexus filter right there we have the Nexus filter now Richard from Ponguru has kindly sent me a nice bag of media as well he does sell it so uh, I'll show you the uh, his website in a moment I'll flash his little card up on the screen for you and uh, and you can pay his little site a visit as well he sells all sorts of different pond medias and stuff some of the best stuff out there to be honest and um, he supplied me with some over time he's been really great for the channel and I do think the world of him so um, go and check his channel out Pond Guru and also I'll stick up his website right we're going to pull this now into this chamber here which is the return and then that will disperse it then equally all over the pond Right, that's the washed out and now we can go back indoors and you'll find that your pond will go very very dark with that blue dye going in there you can also straight away you can see the fish have um, have started, especially the ogan and the, the platinum ones, the, the white on the fish slowly starting to turn blue. Down this end of the pond, it's gone very blue. But that's what happens, and that shows you you've got a good good dispersion all over the pond. I'll move you a bit closer. A bit more juggling around, sorry, but you can see now how blue that water's gone and when some of the white fish come come past you'll see how blue they are look at that there you go but that now is going to get to work killing all those parasites one thing i forgot to say guys switch off your uv sterilizers when you um, when you add this treatment okay for the recommended time that it says 
on the bottle. I normally leave it off for a few days just to make sure everything's great and um, and then I'll switch it back on. You can repeat this process if it hasn't cured your problems after after seven days and you can give it a maximum of four doses okay with this stuff. That's the stuff again. So we're going to see how this stuff works. Everything else you can leave running your filters, you can leave running everything else just switch off your sterilizers and then let that stuff get to work and kill all those horrible little nasties off that are creeping around and driving your fish insane and then hopefully we'll be back up to speed and we'll let uh, that we can enjoy them then for the summer and another thing guys when you actually put these treatments in the water as well make sure you've got a good oxygen supply. If you've got a big air stone, or if you've got an outside pond, which hasn't got a waterfall, and you've just got a little, um, you know, like a sprinkler or a fountain or anything like that nature, make sure that's going, you're oxygenating the water. Obviously I've got my, um, my fountain going there and I've got the return pipe, which is blowing lots and lots of oxygen into the water. And I'll also, after this, I've got a big air stone and a spare pump, which I can put in as well. But this is quite enough oxygen going in there. As long as it's splashing away on the surface, you're going to get that um, that transfer of oxygen into the water, which is what they need when this medication tends to strip a bit of the uh, strip the oxygen out of the water. Now then, getting back to uh, some of the media while we're letting this stuff cook away. Like I said, Richard um, from Pongaroo sent me some uh, some Helix 13 Bio Medium. This is his card. I'll put it up to the screen so all you guys can see it. Go and pay your shop a little visit. There you go. You can freeze frame that. It's got all this information on there you need. And um, and you can pay his site a visit. Now he sent me some of this. Um, I'll just swing you around. That's the stuff there. Helix 13 Bio Medium. I've just opened it up. And I'll grab a little bit out for you to have a look at. Right, there you go. That's what it looks like. Now that's got 40% more surface area than K1 media. That you can see there in my hand. Look, I just grabbed some out of my pond. And um, then... Right, I'll just grab my mic again because I've been running around. Yeah, that's the K1 media here. And as you can see, this stuff the way they've designed it it's got absolutely tons and tons of surface area on it more so than the K1 media has lots of little nooks and crannies the way this stuff works you've got it in the aerated side of your Nexus filter or any filter come to uh, come to say you know to think about it it doesn't have to be that kind of filter you can have, you can put this stuff in a sump in your uh, in your aquarium we'll get onto that in a minute but it's got 40% more surface area. Now what this stuff does, it agitates in the, in the water column. And as the oxygen rattles this stuff around and moves it all around like this, all your dead bacteria that are clinging to it gets knocked off. So only your healthy bacteria will stay alive and clinging. Here, I've dropped a bit on the floor. Now Lemon's playing with that. Um, all your healthy bacteria will still colonise this, but the dead stuff gets knocked off, you see? and then new bacteria can then colonize where the dead stuff has been knocked off so it's very very good stuff now this stuff like you said loads more surface area on there the way that's been designed that's a really good design and i'm going to put some of this into my nexus yeah what i was just saying guys with the helix 13 bio medium um it's the way it joggles around in that little system there you can see it working around in there now as those are all getting bumped together and rolled around in the filter it's knocking off that dead bacteria new colonization is happening all the time and um, and you're keeping a really good strong little system going there what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a little bit of this to the to the filter you find it you'll find it will float for a while when you put it in and then it will slowly get it'll roll around and mix up with the other stuff and so we're going to have a nice little 
nice little mix and match of the Helix and the um, and the Helix 13 as well which should up our game because as we know these things are not very good they're pretty they're pretty good nitrate little factories because as we know they're fantastic filters for getting rid of uh, ammonia nitrite but nitrate not so much you do get a colonization of um, anaerobic bacteria but it's very small living on the insides of the k1 media but um, nowhere near as much as if you would have had a, a backy shower or a, you know one of those slow river uh, filters which we're going to be doing on the inside of the uh, of the pond in the next few weeks I think we'll uh, get into building that I've just got so much going on at the moment it's finding time to do all these little projects but I love it you know that anyway it's a stunning day here today in Wales for a change nice cup of tea nice coffee sorry also if you buy any of this stuff from uh, from Richard he also sends you a, a bag well he sent me a bag and I'm sure he'll do this for for other people as well when you buy the media from him is you get he'll send you a bag of these bacteria balls out as well which is billions of beneficial bacteria in these little balls these little jelly little jelly balls and you add them to your filter they'll roll around releasing billions of bacteria into your system and especially in the springtime it's a great time to do it because the colony of bacteria is low because of the winter period the fish weren't producing waste so the bacteria colony die die off so this is uh, this will replenish what's died back and supercharge your filter as well so we're going to put those in in a minute i'm going to go and get a a little tub so i can scoop some of this media in it'll slowly work its way into the water now i'm going to add these bio balls as well can't believe how nice it is today I've got lemon there, my little cat sat in the sun on my bench. I'm going to pour these guys in as well. Look at that magic stuff now with this media guys you can use this for um for internal filters as well like if you've got um, a sump on your uh, on your freshwater tank and you've got one one of the chambers you can put some of this k1 media in now a while ago richard did send me some of this as well which is k1 micro which is an amazing stuff same as the K1 there, but just a smaller version, and it's ideal for making little tiny filters, bottle filters, anything where you, you can just tumble it inside a bottle or anything like that. There's other videos out there. I think I've made a video before on how to make a little bottle filter. Um, very simple to make, but if you've got a sump, if you chuck a few packets of that inside your sump and let that roll around, or you put an air stone down in the bottom of the sump chamber itself, and let that tumble around in there you'll end up that it works absolutely amazing for uh, for getting rid of the old uh, the ammonia and the nitrate it really does work well there's lemon coming into view get off of there so oh, little cat he's in his teenager years at the moment where are you let's see you yeah there you are tiger he certainly has put on some weight. There he goes, off to catch some mice. But yeah, like I was saying, guys, amazing stuff. Go and get some of that off, uh, off Richard if you uh, if you want to make yourself a nice little filter. Yeah, it's tumbling away nice now. You, there's a bit stuck around there. You'll find when you put anything new into an aquarium, like when you've got a new aquarium, you fill it up with water, you'll get a lot of oxygen bubbles stuck to the glass. Same thing with this media as well, it's very very porous with all the little holes and everything and the oxygen that's coming up from there is getting trapped in amongst in amongst it and um, and that's why it's, it's floating it more but as that gets colonised with bacteria and it gets that slime coat on it it'll, it'll stop doing that and it'll start rolling away just like the other stuff's doing in the chamber. So that's working away lovely now, we've got a couple of little pockets there that just need moving around. just 
just knock some of the air out of it and it will just sink away. Horrible glare out here, I think we'll go inside. Where it's a little bit more noisy. So there you go, you can see everyone's still happy. On the bottom, just cruising around, obviously the water discoloration and the medication in there is just, uh, you can see there, a perfect example there of my big chagoy there, just flashing away on the bottom there. And that's what we've got to get rid of, those horrible little trichodinas and costias and that stuff will be getting to work now. And killing them all off. Now, oh, well, we'll give this stuff a little bit of time now, see how this works. I'm sure it's going to work. I've got all my, uh, my trusted NT labs. I've used their stuff before, not this particular treatment, but um, other ones I've used in the past. And uh, it's always been good stuff. They do lots of stuff. You want to check out their uh, check out their uh, equipment that they've got. They do all kinds of pond testing gear, or well, you name it in the pond world. They're, they're doing it and um, doing a good job as well. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave that on today's video. We've medicated the tank with the uh, with the FMG. That's the stuff. And we're going to let this now run for a few days, leave our sterilizers off for a few days, oxygenate the water well for a few days, and um, here comes my little tancho there, he saw me there, he was going to come up to some food. And hopefully now we're going to eradicate this costia for some time, obviously it's outside, it does get introduced back into the water via all kinds of different ways, you make things get into your pond and get reintroduced over time when you've got an external pond. So now and again we do have to do these little treatments so make sure our little mates are okay and look after them the best we can. Like I said before, any other you know, fish like sterlets, sturgeons, or um, rudd, things of that nature, tench, make sure you get them out before you do it, okay? Because it will, uh, I'm not saying it's going to kill them, but it, 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 they don't, uh, they're pretty susceptible to those medications and it could kill them or make them sick. And you don't want to be doing that when you're trying to heal things up. Anyway, as always guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that little video on how to treat your pond with FMG. Hopefully all goes well. These are looking pretty stress-free. And as always, love you loads. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.